Uh, Mr. Powell, the subcommittee chair, for five minutes. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, we, we hear that in the future we're going to have a better economy, and everybody hopes so, but it's, it's hard to believe. It's hard, to, uh, it's hard for me to believe anyway because I look at back on our past three years, and uh, what Congress has done and what the Fed has done, we've literally injected uh, uh, about $5.3 trillion, and I don't think we got very much for it. The national debt went up $5.1 trillion. Real GDP grew less than uh, 1%, so I, I don't think we've gotten a whole lot. Unemployment really hasn't recovered. We still have uh, 7 million people uh, that have become unemployed. And uh, one statistic that is very glaring, if you look at the chart, is how long people are unemployed. The average time used to be 17 weeks. Now it's nearly 40 weeks they stay unemployed. So nothing there reassures me. And also, um, when, when we talk about prices, we're always reassured there's not all that much inflation. And, uh, and we're told that they might start calculating inflation differently with a new CPI. Of course, we changed our CPI a few years back. There's still a free market group that calculates the CPI uh, the old-fashioned way, and they come up with a figure, in spite of all this weak economy, that prices have gone up 35 percent, 9.4 percent every year. And, and I think if you just went out and talked to the average housewife, she'd probably believe the, the, the 9 percent rather than saying it's only, only 2 percent. So I would say what we've been doing it isn't uh, very reassuring with, uh, with all this money expenditure. But my question is related to the overall policy. Uh, spending all this money uh, hasn't helped, and yet many allies uh, that would endorse so much of what's been going on, whether it's the Fed or the Congress, they, they recognize that consumer spending is very, very important. And, uh, and they concentrate on that. But the $5.1 trillion didn't go to the consumers. It went to buying bad assets. It went to bailing out banks. It went to bailing out uh, big companies. And lo and behold, uh, the consumer didn't end up getting this. They lost their job, and they lost their houses and mortgages, and they're still in trouble. But my question is, if you took that $5.1 trillion and said that consumer spending is good, you could have given every single person in this country $17,000. Why, why is it the program of both the Congress and the Fed to direct the money to the people who have been making a lot of money instead to the people who, if you argue that the consumer needs to spend the money, I obviously don't advocate this, but I would suggest you know, maybe it could have worked better. It couldn't have worked any worse. But what, what is the reason we direct it toward the banks and the big corporations, too big to fail, and we don't pay that much attention to the consumer if it's true, and I don't know if you agree with that or not, that consumer spending is an important issue? Well, it is an important issue, uh, Congressman. Um, but you're, you're mistaken in saying that the Federal Reserve has spent any money. Um, you say $5 trillion. We have lent money. We have purchased securities. That's not buying, that's not dissipating, you know, the money. We've gotten all the money back. Um, as an article over the weekend by Alan Sloan showed, in fact, uh, the Fed has been a major profit center for the U.S. government. We've turned over profits in the last two years of $125 billion. So we are not costing any money in terms of uh, budget deficits or anything like that. In terms of what we were trying to do, of course, the, one, the reason the Federal Reserve was founded a century ago was to try to address the problems arising from financial panics, which did, by the way, occur in an unregulated environment in the 19th century. Um, we provided liquidity and short-term loans to help financial systems stabilize. We did that not because we particularly care about the managers or the uh, shareholders of financial yeah, I, firms. I, I, I hate to interrupt, but my time is about up. But I would like to suggest that you say it's not spending money. Well, it's money out of thin air. You put it into the market and you hold assets, and the assets aren't, you know, they, they are diminishing in value when you buy, buy up bad assets. But very quickly, if you could answer another question, because I'm curious about this. You know, the price of gold today is uh, $1,580. The dollar during these last three years was devalued almost 50%. When you wake up in the morning, do you care about the price of gold? Well, I pay attention to the price of gold, but I think it reflects a lot of things. It reflects uh, global uncertainties. I think people are, the reason people hold gold is as a protection against what we call tail risk, really, really bad outcomes. And to the extent that the last few years have made people more worried about potential of a major crisis, then they have gold as a protection. Do you, th do you think gold is money? 
No. It's not money. It's Even a, if it had been metal. money for 6,000 years, somebody reversed that and eliminated that economic law. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's an asset. I mean, it's the same. Would you say treasury bills are money? I don't think they're well, money either, do, but they're a financial do, why asset. Why do central banks hold it? Well, it's, it's the former money. reserves. It's why don't they hold diamonds? Well, it's tradition, long-term <laughs> tradition. Well, some people still think it's money. I yield back. My time is up. Thank you.